plumbing apprenticeship. The do's and don'ts of your plumbing apprenticeship. I'm going to tell you about it in this video. I want to make sure you stay till the end because I'm going to give you the number one tip to be the best plumbing apprentice that you can be. I used to teach apprenticeship training in the local union, and you can always tell what students are going to do really well in the trade, and you can normally tell which ones may not make it all the way through. It's really easy to tell this because you see these students that come in, they don't want to do the work, they want to take a nap, they want to talk to their friends, they want to play on their phones under the table. Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you some do's and some don'ts that will really help you, but I'm also going to tell you what you can do to be the very best apprentice. Let's start off with the do's. And it's really easy. Work hard. If you work hard, you're going to show the plumber you work with, the foreman, the superintendent, maybe the company owner, that you're really serious about it. And that's what this is all about. How serious are you about your plumbing career? Because if you want to be a great plumber, first you have to become a great apprentice. You have to learn well. Which leads me to the next one, study hard. There's more to plumbing than just working with the plumber you're with and learning what he's doing. What you want to do, and I've got books that I use and recommend, check out some of these other videos. I've got books that I tell people how I studied for my plumbing exams. Take it a little bit further. If you're serious about learning plumbing better than anybody else, get serious about it now. Get the study guide. Learn it. Learn the answers. That will help you when it comes to doing the plumbing because you're going to have that knowledge in your head. You're going to know more than maybe any apprentice in your class or any apprentice on the job. And to me, that's a great start. Make sure when you show up for your interview or your job every day, you're dressed right. If there's a uniform, look better than everybody else. Have your shirt tucked in. And I, I know that's bad because I don't tuck mine in, but I'm going for a different look because I'm an owner. I'm on social media. I do things a little bit different, but that's part of what I am. But my guys, they're supposed to have their shirts tucked in. They're supposed to wear a belt. They're supposed to have on boots. Their shirt's supposed to look good. It's supposed to be clean. Be that kind of apprentice. Be that kind of plumber. How's your hygiene? Is your hair brushed? Is it clean? Do you wear a cap? Is your cap kept clean? Do you have an extra shirt with you so if you have to get dirty, if you have to get in an attic or under a house or in a crawl space, you've got another shirt for that purpose to where you can get in and then come out and still look good. Guys, that's what it's all about. What are you thinking about? What is it when you come to work? Are you just thinking about what you're doing on the weekend? Are you just thinking about that check you're going to get on Friday? Or are you actively thinking about how do I become a better plumber? How do I become a great plumber? Because that's the mindset you really need to have. Another thing is when your plumber is teaching you, listen and learn. If I have to tell an apprentice three different times how to do something or what size tool it takes, or hey, did you remember to do this? And it's like, oh, gee, no, uh, I forgot. That's way too many times. Guys, if the plumber you're working with is training you properly, make sure you're taking time to learn. Make sure you're listening and make sure you're asking questions to understand it better. But don't ask the same question over and over again. Guys, to become a great plumber, all it takes is a great attitude and a great mindset. And if you do these things I'm talking about, you can become the apprentice that every plumber wants to work with every day. There's nothing wrong with that. Now let's talk about some things not to do. Don't talk back. I hired a tradesman one time. He thought he knew everything. And the bad thing was, at the time, I probably had 35 years experience. He had two. And he would try to tell me how he would do a job different than me. That's great. When it's your company, do it that way. But until then, you work for me. Or you work with the plumber that you're with. Don't talk back. Listen and learn. You may learn a new way to do something that may actually help you, may benefit you, and might actually make you a better plumber. So listen and learn without talking back, without being argumentative. If the plumber asks you to do something a certain way, make sure you do it that way. There's a reason. He wants it that way to either get the job done quicker, get it done safer, get it done right, whatever it is. 
don't talk back. And don't think you know everything. Remember, you're just starting out. I don't care if you've got a fifth-year apprenticeship under your belt. You're still just starting out. Meaning, if I've got 40 years experience and you've got five, I might know something about this. And if you're working for me and I want it done a certain way, let's not argue about it. Let's not waste our time here. If I show you how I want it done, that's great. Now, if you want to say, hey, look, I've got a question. I learned to lay it out this way or I learned to do it this way. Is this okay? We may look at it. We may talk about it and we may discuss it. But at the end of the day, remember, the plumber you're working with, that's his job. It's him that's on the line. Meaning, if you're my apprentice and we're laying out a bathroom and it's wrong, they're not going to come back to you. They're going to come to me. It doesn't matter who did it. So remember, listen and learn. Don't talk back and don't argue because I promise you don't know everything. Now, a big one. Don't be lazy. You want to be that guy that shows up ready to work every day. Not just ready to work, but ready to work hard. You want to come in and be that guy that, look, I know what you need, so I'm going to go ahead and get your tools out. I'm going to go ahead and get the materials out. Become that apprentice that knows how to get ahead of his plumber. And I'll tell you a story. I had an apprentice one time. We were working over here in Garland. We were building a big chip plant, and it was great because we were hooking up fan coil units. And I was up on a ladder and putting stuff together, and I was counting what fittings I needed next. And I start to climb down or holler at my apprentice and look at him. And he is literally standing there with the fittings in his hand. Become that apprentice. Now, this guy was not lazy. This guy worked hard. He always asked questions. He wanted to learn. He wanted to be the best apprentice that he could be. And he worked really hard at it. And I believe he actually you know, won the apprentice competition. In the union, that's a big thing. Here's the deal. What kind of apprentice do you want to be? What kind of plumber do you want to be? When I say don't be lazy... Man, show up. Be ready to go to work. Come in with that positive attitude, that mindset that you're going to do whatever it takes to be the very best. If you go through your apprenticeship training program like that, you're going to do really well. Before I give you the big tip at the end, what I want to ask you is, if you're an apprentice or if you're a plumber, what tips would you have? What tips would you give someone? Man, there's a lot of great tips. You know, leave your phone in the car, put it in a lunch bucket. Do this, do that. I actually had an apprentice one time that walked around playing Pokemon all the time. He didn't last very long. Guys, you have to step up and be that apprentice that you want to be. So do me a favor. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what other tips you would recommend for somebody that's an apprentice. Either getting into the trade or wants to get into the trade. Something to help set them apart and make them better. Okay, now for my big tip. And this is if you want to be the very best apprentice you can be, be better than everybody else and work hard at it. When you come in and you look around the room, if you're going through apprentice training program or you look around the office, if you're working with other apprentices, look at each one of them and think, what makes them better than me? And improve on that. If you want to be the best apprentice and the best plumber learn to be better than everybody else. And that may be studying harder. It may be working harder. It may be learning how to do things better than everybody else. The value you bring to the companies that you work for determines what kind of money you can make. I've got apprentices that I pay over scale. I've got journeymen that I pay over scale. They bring more value to me as a company owner. As a plumber, man, I really want to take care of the apprentice that that is better, that's best. I want to take care of the apprentice that works harder than every other apprentice I have. The other ones, might be time to replace them. People are always looking at that. So what can you do to be the very best apprentice that you can be? So guys, we've gone over the do's and don'ts of your plumbing apprenticeship. And like I said, please, if you're a journeyman or an apprentice, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think and make sure you give me a thumbs up on this video. Check out some of the other videos. We've got other videos that literally break it down, different things you can do. But these are some of the biggest do's and don'ts about becoming an apprentice plumber. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please let us know. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, and I'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed.